Joining us now, New York Times bestselling author David Lipsky. His new book is titled The Parrot and the Igloo, Climate and the Science of Denial. David, good morning. It's great to have you with us. Well, it's a pleasure to be here. So we're talking about the heat in, across the country all over the place. We've seen extreme temperatures, uh, particularly this summer. We've seen flooding up in Vermont, terrible flooding right now in Vermont. It's everywhere you look right now. I have friends sending me photos from Vermont. Yeah, yeah no, it's, it's, it's being the pictures today. are stunning. So your book, The Parrot and the Igloo, you sort of concede when you talk about the book Global warming, climate change books can be a little dry. And so this is more of a narrative story, all based in fact and a, a true story. Where do we pick it up? Um, where do we pick it up, the story, or where do we pick up the book? Because the book is available at fine stores everywhere. Well, that, yeah. yes, that I think we can find the book, the story, though. Where do we pick up the story? Well, the story begins right from the start. It begins with Thomas Edison inventing electricity, right? And then we go right from 1956. It's the reason I wrote the book. In 1956, Time Magazine, not the hardest thing to find. Mm -hmm. uh, Time Magazine is a publication that, that Walter knows very <laughs> well. And uh, the, uh, one of the first American climate scientists, Roger Revell, said, in about 60 years, there will be big changes. They could have a violent effect on the culture, on the climate, rather. And we'll know if there'll be things like salt water flowing in the streets of New York and London. Um, it took us about 20 years, let's say, to, to knock down the science. And then in 79, that's why I was thinking when I was watching the, the great, uh, the B-roll we were watching just now, um, President Carter asked a special, a special uh, study session of the National Academy of Sciences to say, uh, look, is this going to happen or not? And they returned a very quick verdict. They said, the study, of the, the conclusions of this panel will be reassuring for scientists, but disturbing for policymakers. Um, we find no reason to doubt that if carbon dioxide continues to increase, that climate changes will result, and no reason to believe they will be negligible. And the, the, the broadcast we just saw is non-negligible climate change. And from those warnings was born, as you get at in the book, entire culture of denialism to That's say right. this isn't actually happening it's certainly not happening as fast as the global climate change alarmists are telling us how did that side of the movement grow um i think it grew because it was interesting what mika was saying before about abortion we when we look at data sometimes it means we have to act and so we've developed a culture across the board on a number of issues right where we can just keep looking at the data and keep arguing and refining, right? And that always plays into the hands of people who don't want a final decision reached and who don't want action. So and there was money behind it. Sorry, Mike. Uh, well, excuse me for interrupting yeah. you, but how is it, David, that this is such a visual and physical issue in the world, not just the United States? You can feel yeah. the heat. You can feel when you're freezing. You can see the water coming up through your kitchen floor in a flood. How is it that with all of this physical, visible evidence that climate deniers get away with saying, no, that's not really happening? Uh, they prepare us. They, they give us a way of looking at things. And so if, if you give someone the screen to examine something through, then when they examine, they see what you've asked them to see. It's how a magic trick works, basically. So if you tell people the climate is always changing and then you get something really hot, a really hot summer, it's like, well, I remember hearing from an authority figure that the climate always changes, so this can't be that big a deal. The thing that you were asking uh, reminds me of the famous example that Vice President Gore, former Vice President mm -hmm. Gore, used, which is the frog analogy. Mm -hmm. That if you put a frog in boiling water, it will jump right out, but if you put it in lukewarm water, it will stay until it gets too hot, which is what's happened to us. Uh, one of the fun things in the book is that's not true. In fact, uh, some that's scientists, uh, yeah, no, the frogs will jump right out immediately. Yeah. And the only creatures that will stay in that water over 40 or 50 years, it turns out, are us. <laughs> now, tell me, we talked about these extreme events in Texas. I see it's like uh, over 110 degrees in places like Phoenix and Austin even. And we see the floods. But people will say, okay, those are weather events. They're not directly related to climate. How do you show that they are, or do we know that they are? Um, that's one of the fun things about the book. There were all these warnings, right? Um, so there's two things. A, the, probably the most famous uh, American climate scientist is a guy named Jim Hansen. Oh, yeah. yeah. And what he said is, oh, Mike, I, uh, brother Willie, I interrupted you. What were you going to mm -hmm. say about uh, Dr. No, Hansen? no, no, go ahead. I was, oh. I, I, oh, got it. What he said is, it's random. So climate is just the accumulation and weather is sort of random. Mm -hmm. And he, he used to have these big, like, fuzzy dice, the kind you'd put in the, you know, in the rear view. And he said that the, essentially climate change that we were forcing is like loading the dice. So that before, you would, you would roll it and you might have eight 
uh, you know, over 90 degree things. But if you keep loading the dice, you know, then it's more likely to get 10 and then more likely to get 12. So that's the, that was how he explained the difference between weather and climate. Joe? Yeah, you know, uh, David, I, I, I've told the story a few times on this show, but now seems like a good time to repeat it. Um, I, I, was, I was spending time with a guy who probably has never voted for a Democrat in his life. He's one of the more conservative uh, political uh, people that, that I've been around. And I asked him at one point, because he was, he, he's, a, he's a leader in the insurance industry, I said, so it seems like you guys are paying out a lot of money for natural hmm. disasters these days. I know you're really conservative. What's your position on climate change? And he like laughed at me because what are you talking about? <laughs> he goes, I can show you what we were paying 20 years ago. I can show you what we were paying 10 years ago. And I will show you what we're paying this year. He said, you would have to be a fool to not know, not believe, to not know hmm. that climate change is upon us and the result is nothing less than catastrophic. Um, and, and my God, that was five, six, seven years ago. It's only gotten worse for him. It's only gotten worse for other insurance companies. I get it. I, 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 I have no sympathy for insurance companies. But you just look at the data, the climate catastrophes, what they're paying out now, no comparison. Um, yeah, and the, the fascinating thing and what made it a great story is that we had all the warnings. What was frustrating for the scientists, there's a great quote uh, from one of the scientists who briefed lawmakers uh, actually almost exactly 40 years ago. And he went to them and said, look, this is going to happen. We just have the National Academy of Sciences. They are pretty clear this is going to happen. And the lawmakers asked him, well, when are these changes due to arrive? And he said, oh, you know, more or less, 39, more or less 40 years. And the politician mm -hmm. said, well, get back to us in 39. Mm -hmm. So one of the things mm -hmm. about the book is it wow. shows, it's, a, it's kind of a great way. It's oh like those God. medical tests where you drink a grapefruit flavored thing and it shows you how the whole body works. The great thing about writing this book, which is an incredibly funny story to have both written and I hope to read, is that it shows you the ways that we don't work as well as we used to work. We used to be able to look at a problem, size it up and take action. And now we've become right. endless studiers. It's like there's always study period, but never the finals. And so what we're seeing now is nature will schedule the finals for us. Mm -hmm. And it's written in a narrative mm -hmm. way compared to a Coen Brothers movie. Which that'll, that'll sell some <laughs> yeah. books. Cool. The new <laughs> book is titled The Parrot and the Igloo, Climate and the Science of Denial. David Lipsky, thank you. The thing I was going to tell you was that Jim Hansen, was my little league baseball coach in New Jersey. Wow. Yeah, oh, wow. Of, yeah. amazing. Through, through a nice BP, too. Thanks. Congratulations on the book. Great to see you. Walter <laughs> Isaacson, thank you. We'll be